welcome to Matilda's Messes. Today uh, we are going to do a different video. I know I promised a clean with me part three, which is the bedroom. I haven't been sleeping that well the past couple of days, so um, I'm not really in the cleaning mood. <laughs> but um, I am going to try extra hard to go to bed early tonight and make sure I get some sleep. Um, so that way I have enough energy tomorrow to fill my clean with me number three, the bedroom. So uh, today I figured I'd just do a quick little video, um, basically going over the simple things of owning a corgi. So a corgi can be a Welsh Pembroke corgi or it can be a cardigan corgi. They're both technically Welsh dogs. The only difference uh, between a cardigan corgi and a Pembroke Welsh, Welsh Corgi is their tails. Um, cardigans have the long fox-like tail. Um, Pembroke Welsh Corgis have the stubby, um, what looks like cropped tails. Most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, their tails are not cropped. They're born that way. They're bred that way. And they're super cute. So that is basically the difference between cardigans and Pembroke Welsh Corgis. Um, otherwise, they both have the same kind of maintenance and the same kind of needs. Um, and they both have the same kind of personalities, though it will range from dog to dog and breeder to breeder. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, or if you get them from a breeder versus uh, if you rescue them, they will all have different personalities. But their basic personality traits are usually all the same. Um, the things you need to know about corgis that may make you go, maybe a corgi's not right for me. I'm going to cover that first because I think that's the most important part of owning a dog is knowing what you're getting into as far as the negative aspects because those are the things that are really going to make you decide whether you want a dog or not. Corgis shed all year long. All year long. I know I mentioned before that there is the in-between months where they shed more than normal and they will look a little scraggly like this. Like usually she has kind of a mane thing going on, um, but right now her neck looks really tiny because um, all her down fur is gone. Um, and she's in the process of growing new down fur on her neck. Um, but they do shed all year long. They shed pretty much all three layers of their coats at different times. The down fur in the in between months <clears throat> is the first to go. Then the second layer, which is their uh, waterproof layer, um, is a layer that is designed specifically for their breed to keep them dry. Mind you, they're from Wales. They're Welsh dogs. Wales, Britain, and Scotland get a lot of rain. Basically, if you've ever been to Portland, Oregon, or Seattle, Washington, and you stay there for more than a week, and you see how much rain they get in just a week, um, that's basically how Britain, Wales, and um, Ireland, Scotland are, that whole British Isles. So um, they are designed to keep their coats from getting drenched, because if they did, they would get mold and yeast growing on their skin, which is not comfortable. They're completely waterproof. No, if you submerge them in a pool or in a bath, they are going to get soaked. Then they have this top show layer, which he's missing a lot of right now because this is the last layer to go. It's the shiny top layer. It's the show coat. It's um, the one that keeps them safe from dust and dirt. They shed all year long. There are some months where it's way worse than others, but they are constantly, constantly shedding. Like, I could brush her for two hours today, and tomorrow she would just shed just as much as she did yesterday without me even brushing her. Um, so it is suggested that you do brush them every day. One to two hours if you're patient. If you're not, 30 minutes a day is fine as long as you're willing to vacuum your carpets and your floors every day. Um, also, a big negative about corgis is they are not designed to be around children. Um, corgis are herding dogs, not hurting, herding, as in herding cattle or herding sheep. They were designed basically to herd cattle and sheep, more sheep than cattle because they're tiny. But 
Um, they're designed to nip at the heels of animals or nudge them with their nose, um, depending on the farmer's preference, um, to herd them in a certain direction. And that's just in their basic instinct. They're not really hunting dogs. They'll chase squirrels and stuff like that like any other dog, but they're not a good hunting dog. So they don't really have that aggression in them, but they do um, have that hurting instinct, which they don't mean to hurt the kids. They actually want to help the kids by hurting them towards you or towards a room where they frequently see them in. And by doing that, they may nip at their meals or at their um, other appendages, which may cause your child to uh, be scared of the dog. Um, but other than that, they're not big biters. You know, it, it also depends on the dog, mind you. If the dog was traumatized in its past, had an aggressive mother or father in their breeding, um, they may be more up to biting. But most of the time, corgis are very, very friendly. Um, but they will nip children if they're trying to herd them into another room. So if you have small children, maybe wait to get a corgi until they're a little bit older, maybe seven or eight, when they know better than to antagonize the corgi. Another negative thing about corgis is uh, they do need a lot of exercise. This is a medium-sized dog and a small dog stature. That means that um, though they have stubby legs and um, you know a small looking narrow frame, they are big muscular dogs. They have big muscles on their legs and um, on their back and in their neck. Because of this, they need a lot of exercise. They have a lot of energy. Um, like I love her, despite all her flaws. She loves running, just runs. Mind you, um, though they need a lot of exercise, they are not long distance runners, they are sprinters um, or slow joggers. So if you need like a jogging pal where you only go maybe a mile a day, two miles max, um, or if you want you know, to practice some sprinting with them, they're perfect dogs for that. Um, because of their stubby legs, they cannot last more than a sprint or a slow jog, um, just because they get worn out real easily. If you want a long distance, distance running dog, I would suggest getting a dog with longer legs and leaner legs. Um, but they do need a lot of exercise and they do need a lot of mental stimulation. If they do not have a lot of mental stimulation, you may have problems with them um, tearing up things, um, uh, getting into things they're not supposed to get into, uh, getting a little agitated. Um, so what you'll want to do is just basically in the morning, um, take them for a long walk, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes even. And then, um, you know, if you're able to halfway through the day, uh, give them another walk. And then, um, you know, somewhere around 6 to 7 p.m., I'll give them another walk and then a short walk at night before they go to bed. Um, also, corgis love puzzle toys and uh, treat ball toys where they have to roll it around the house to uh, get the treats out. They're very, very food driven dogs. Um, so they love treats, they love food. Um, they'll sniff food out from anywhere. They're basically kind of like a, a basset hound or um, a dachshund where they always know where food is and they'll get to it if you let them. So um, they are actually um, bad for that, but because they're such short dogs and they don't have very big legs, as long as you keep food out of their reach, just don't leave food out on the coffee table or a trash bag on the floor because they will get into it and they will tear things up and they will eat things they're not supposed to. Another negative thing about corgis um, that is not really that negative is that um, they're not good listeners. Yes, they're trainable. Yes, um, you know, you can, you can do agility training. You can do um, all sorts of things, you know, with them, but they have very limited focus, meaning if you're trying to tell them to do something, but they're already fixated on something else, they're not gonna stop what they're doing just because you told them to. They're very stubborn. 
and they have very much selective hearing, like right now, is that you gotta stay. You gotta stay with mamas. You gotta stay. Please stay. I love you. <laughs> Just love me back. Uh, I got, I got shedding fur all over me, all over my lips. Back to my point. Um, they're very stubborn dogs. Uh, yes, you can train them. Yes, they'll do things for treats. Um, if you don't have a treat in your hand or if there's something going on in the background that's making them fixate on it or they want to go towards it, you're going to have a hard time telling them no. Um, you know, there's always exceptions to the rules. Some, some corgis are very obedient and very uh, good listeners. Um, this one is not. I can go away now. Are you going to sit right there? Um, okay, so the positives of corgis. Corgis, um, you know, can be very, very loyal, but, um, you know, they'll, they'll hang out with pretty much anybody. So, um, they're not exactly clingy, but they're also pretty loyal. Um, corgis also really, really love being pet and handled. Um, <clears throat> they're really chill dogs, and, um, so if you have kids that are older than, you know, seven or eight, um, these are probably ideal dogs to have around them because they love being messed with, they love playing, they love their tummies being rubbed all the time, they love being massaged and rough housed. Um, again, they need a lot of mental stimulation. So if you do have kids above seven or eight, um, this is really good ideal dog for them. See, belly rubs. Okay, so another positive about corgis is that they have a bigger bark than their body. Again, this is a, like a medium-sized dog in a small dog's body. So they have a big voice box and they will project their bark, especially if you have a hallway that echoes or whatever. If someone's trying to break into your house, they sound like a much bigger dog than they are. They're very similar to dachshunds in that way. Um, dachshunds have a large bark, a very deep, large bark, and corgis are the same way. They're not yappy. They, when they do bark, it's a very deep, low bark. And it really, you know, if you live in a not so nice area, um, it's a good deterrent from people breaking into your house because it sounds like a much bigger dog than they are. They're also pretty good apartment dogs. If you have, um, if you keep them on walks, and you keep them mentally stimulated during the day with treat balls and puzzle toys and you know what other you know two toys whatever other toys they're really interested in um then they're great apartment dogs um usually when they get to a certain age they just stop chewing on stuff and all of that as long as you've uh, trained the separation anxiety out of them and they don't need a lot of room to live in um, as long as you don't live in one of those little economy apartments um, or studio apartments, um, you'll be just fine. One bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, doesn't matter. They'll live in it. Always wants pets. It never ends. Never. <clears throat> Corgis are not exactly lap dogs or cuddle dogs. Yes, when they're puppies, you can train them to cuddle and you can train them to be lap dogs. But most of the time, um, they want to be active. They just always want to be active. They're definitely not like a pug or a Frenchie in that sense. Um, they do love belly rub. They'll cuddle with you as long as you're giving them belly rubs or um, giving them affection or playing with them. Um, but they're not exactly cuddly dogs. Um, they're, if you want to sleep with them all night like this, it's not gonna happen. They like their space, they like their room to run around, um, and they like to do their own thing along with being with you. You see a see. Yeah, you see a see. You Another great thing about parties is um, they don't mind being dressed up. I vary between corgi and corgi personality, but from my experience and most corgis that I've met in our community here in Dallas, um, a lot of them don't mind being dressed up. They don't mind put, having sweaters put on them, even though they have three layers of coat. They don't really need sweaters. But if you want a dog where you can take them out for Halloween to like a dog Halloween party and, you know, put the little 
hot dog bun on them or uh, if you want to dress them up in dresses or whatever which um, if you do you need to get the large ones because they have long bodies and large necks um, but um, you know they're all for it um, there you know there will be times where you might have a corgi that uh, will try to tear it off immediately um, but as far as most of the corgis I've met female and male they just pretty much take it like champs they tolerate it really well and Izzy here actually enjoys it she knows if I pull out a raincoat or her um, fleece um, snow coat now she knows she's going to be going somewhere I'm excited and she wants me to put it on her so no I'm not torturing her with outfits she actually thoroughly enjoys it and she gets all excited when I pull it out of her little closet the other thing about Grace is they don't really have that many health benefits uh, health risks. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get to the last part of the video, which is uh, health tips, tricks, and risks that corgis may have uh, or may not have. So um, corgis have all the normal risks that any other dog has, especially if you overfeed them. Um, if you overfeed them or feed them the wrong um, foods that have lots of grains or sugars in it, yes, they will develop diabetes just like humans do. Um, so just make sure you feed them a well-balanced diet. Make sure you research the food you give them. These are not picky eaters. Again, it'll vary from dog to dog. Different dogs have different personalities, but uh, corgis on a whole are very food driven and will eat pretty much anything you put in front of them. So whether you want to feed them canned food only, kibble with canned food, just kibble, or a raw food diet, um, those things are all good they'll eat any of it. They are not picky. They do not have very sensitive stomachs. They have pretty normal sensitivity when it comes to their stomachs. So when you're switching food, just make sure you mix it with their normal food they had before for a couple of days and kind of just integrate them into their new food entirely. Other um, normal risk that they have, it has to do with their teeth. Any dog, any animal really, um, can develop teeth problems. Um, some dogs more than others, um, and it can be a breed thing, but it can also just be just the dog and their genetics. Just make sure uh, with any dog that you have to train them to uh, be able to brush their teeth. Also, cleaning their teeth every day or every other day, depending how tolerant your dog is to it, um, really lowers the bad breath in your dog. Um, but just make sure every other year you get your dog, uh, your dog's teeth checked out by your vet um, or a vet dentist. Um, and usually every two to three years, they'll need a, an actual deep cleaning where they, get, they will need some teeth extractions just like humans do, uh, just like any other animal does, even cats do. So um, another a normal health risk that is specific to their t body structure is their backs. Again, as long as you're feeding them a well-balanced diet, feeding them for long walks, things like that, um, they will pretty much not have any problems with their back. Just make sure if you have a corgi that enjoys getting up on the bed with you or getting up on the tall couch with you, just make sure you have uh, either pet steps. They're very inexpensive online. You can buy them on Amazon. You can get them at PartsMart. You can get them even at Big Lots. Um, so just make sure that um, if you do have a corgi and it does like getting up on the furniture and you, you want them up on the furniture, um, to either get some pet steps or at least assist them onto the bed instead of having them struggle, get on and get off the bed. As far as major health risks go, um, all older dogs have a risk of getting cancer or a, you know, a slight risk of um, getting you know joint pain arthritis, things like that. Uh, corgis have the same level of getting that kind of stuff as any other dog. Uh, their backs you have to watch for. Um, they may get a herniated disc. They may get um, <clears throat> some arthritis of the spine. But other than that, um, their, their leg joints, all of that is pretty normal when getting arthritis. Probably towards more of the end years of their life is the only time you'll see them really struggle with arthritis. Um, now we're going to get to life expectancy. Corgis 
uh, if you look them up online or on Animal Planet or something like that, the average lifespan of a corgi, they say, is 11 years. She's eight. She looks four to five years old. Now, what they're talking about with age expectancy is if the normal person were to take care of a dog, meaning they don't really pay attention to their diet. They, you know, sometimes slip them some stuff from the table, you know, or they don't get pet stuff, or they don't do anything special for their pets. Um, then the average lifespan is, of course, going to be 11 years old because they can throw off their backs, they can get diabetes, they can get all sorts of things from you not paying attention to your dog. If you're going to get a dog, you're going to have to treat it like it's your kid. You're going to have to take it in for yearly vaccinations. You're going to have to do things that prevent them from having an, uh, a shorter lifespan. So I asked my vet, you know, I, the average year, you know, lifespan for uh, a corgi online is 11 years. And I said, yeah, well, that's if you don't take care of them. Or that 17 is probably a good year to shoot, shoot for, for, um, you know, life, life expectancy. So if you take really good care of your corgi and they have good breeding and good genetics, then um, they will last you a good 15, anywhere between 15 and, um, you know, 19 years because they're a smaller dog and also because um, you're taking good care of them. And lastly, uh, just remember, corgis have big personalities. Selective hearing, yes, but they are very big in personality department. They will tell you what's going on. Um, they love playing. They love being around people. Uh, it doesn't matter who they are, they love them. Um, very happy looking dogs, always smiling, always radiant, always cute. And they're pretty much chill dogs with a spastic kind of uh, spurts of energy and a hilarious attitude. Well, that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you take everything that I've said and kind of uh, think it over before getting a corgi, whether it's a puppy or a rescue. Make sure that you know what you're getting into before you get any dog, really. But uh, if you're looking at corgi specifically, because you've been watching a lot of corgi videos and uh, you just think they're, they're the most adorable dogs in the world, uh, just make sure you just keep everything in perspective and just see where you're living, see what's going on in your life, see what kind of family you have, if you have a family, um, and see if they're with the right dogs for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and then uh, go ahead and go over to the subscribe button. I do lifestyle videos. Just uh, go ahead and hit subscribe, and then if you want to know right when I uh, post a video, you can go ahead and click on the bell uh, icon right next to the subscribe button. That'll let you know um, exactly when I upload a video and it'll give you a little notification when I do. And again, my name is Matilda and you've been watching Matilda's Messes and I'm just here to remind you it's okay to leave some creative messes behind. You're just letting everyone know you did something today.